Hi everyone. In this session, we're going to look at how to set up and deploy the Sandblast agent cloud management piece. Um, some base assumptions at this point is you have access to a Sandblast agent cloud management portal. And from here, you have then spun up the actual endpoint service itself. It's just following through the process uh, and filling in a bit, some bits of information, at which point you will then receive uh, an email from the actual service itself that looks something like this. So Smart Endpoint Console login details. Hello, that's me. Uh, you may now log into Smart Endpoint Console to manage the policy. So the username will be by default admin. The password will be the password that you set when you deploy it. And then this is important here, the actual instance name itself, the server name that's been created when this was, uh, when this was spun up. What's also important here is to ensure that you have the correct smart console. So whilst this is an R80.30 release of smart of our endpoint management, the actual smart console itself is bespoke to the cloud management piece. So it's important that you download this version and then run that install and run that to then connect to the cloud management server. There's also the initial endpoint client that you can download, but what we're going to do today as part of the process is we're going to look at uh, the other ways in which you can facilitate that. Once I've installed the actual uh, Smart Console piece itself, I can then launch Smart Endpoint from the installation tool, and then I fill out the information that was provided to me in the email. So the account is admin, the password that was set up when the portal was set up, and then most importantly, the instance server. I also tick this box here, the cloud server box, and then from there I can click login. As you can see now, we are just beginning the login process. So there'll be a percentage bar that follows along the bottom uh, until uh, I then initiate connection. This is just a pop-up in terms of how to enable two-factor authentication if need be. Just click OK to get past that. And then the endpoint server instance loads up itself. Now, for those of you already familiar with Checkpoint and um, managing the endpoint, it's a very identical process. There is no difference from managing it locally um, and in the cloud. They both appear the same. They both generally run the same code base as well. Once Smart Endpoint is loaded up, I'm now presented with the management server. As you can see here, I am connected to the endpoint server and that particular instance ID that was created earlier on. We have five tabs across the top, overview, policy, users and computers, reporting and deployment. So we're going to focus on the deployment area first and foremost. And we have two uh, key areas that we want to be looking at. So we want to be looking at the software deployment rules along here. So this is pre-populated by default with the Sandblast Agent Basic. You can click on this here, expand that, and you can see the other bits that you could potentially work with as well. Uh, in most scenarios here, anti-malware, Sandblast agent, Sandblast agent anti-bot, and then the threat extraction emulation, the actual Sandblast piece are selected by default. And then what we want to do is we want to uh, plug our cloud instance into our Active Directory. So we can click on organizational scanners over here. And then we have two choices, add directory scanner. This is uh, appropriate if I was running an on-premise um, server, endpoint management server and I could communicate with my Active Directory server. Uh, for the cloud management piece, what I want to do is I want to run file-based scanner. And what that does is that allows for communication between the actual client that's installed locally on my machine and the Active Directory server that's sitting in my network. And then the client itself will then facilitate the sync up to the cloud of the actual Active Directory server itself. So what we've got to do is we've just got to click the link here, add file-based scanner. And then we just need to click to scan another domain or use alternate credentials here and fill out the information. So the domain name is alpha.cp. The username is administrator. The password is my domain admin password. And then the domain controller down here will be the IP address of my domain controller. Once all the information is 
uh, filled in, I just click OK, and then it will communicate with my Active Directory server that's locally on premise to this client, and then it should pull through the relevant information. So we can hit close now at that point. And we just wait a short while. Once the actual sync starts to occur, you will see the process here. So the server that I've defined in the file based scanner, and it is now running through and getting an initial sync of all of the objects and users in there. We just wait a short while for that to happen. Once that's done, we can see that the entities have been scanned. The directory has been pulled through. And if I go over here to users and computers, I can then down, uh, expand that down and I can see that my directory is now contained within here. So what I've got here is just a demonstration AD server and I've just created a few different trees. So you can see that these trees can be populated and all that relevant information can be pulled through. At this point then I have a choice. I can be very granular in terms of my deployment rules or I can just work with the uh, top the top default deployment option, which will apply to the all, uh, entire organization. So what I mean by that is I can create uh, sub deployment rules, expand my directories, and you can see that my alpha CP directory is here. And if I had different organizational units, maybe where I wanted to run different uh, endpoint blades, what I could do is select one of those. So let's take, for example, sales, hit next. And then I can choose different blades. So I might not want to run for argument's sakes, the anti-malware. I don't know why I wouldn't, but we can choose to do that. I can hit next, hit finish. And there you can see now there's another rule here that's applied to the sales entity within my Active Directory with a different component of blades uh, that are uh, relevant to that. What I can also do at this point here is I can download the initial client. So you can see we have two clients, one for Windows and one for Mac. What we're going to do for in today's example is we're going to use the Windows client. So I'm just going to click download here. This is a very small download. It's about 20 megabytes in size. I just have to specify a, uh, a directory for my endpoint server. So I'm just going to create a folder. We'll call that endpoint client. And then we hit select folder and at that point the actual MSI file will now be downloaded as you can see it's only 23 megabytes. Once the package has been downloaded uh, we'll receive a confirmation and then we can copy the package across to the endpoint client or deploy it using whatever MSI tools we have available to us to do automated package deployment and then we will uh, install the initial endpoint client. So for the purposes of the demo, I do have a machine, a Windows 10 machine here that's ready and up and running. It is connected to the uh, Active Directory server that I've got as well. However, as I said uh, earlier on, you don't necessarily have to have Active Directory to work with our environment. We can work with virtual groups as well within that. So I'm going to double click on the MSI file and then follow the process here. Again, as said, you can manually deploy this if you want to. So what I have to do here at this point is provide my administrator credentials for my Active Directory. And then we can begin the install. Okay, the agent is now installed. Uh, installed, what will happen at this point is it will uh, phone home, as I like to call it. So it's actually got the cloud uh, server IP address baked into the, the, that particular file, which is why it's important that you use only this particular file that you've pulled down from that endpoint management server in the cloud. And what it's going to do is it's going to take a few minutes whilst it phones home. And then, as you can see here, it's now doing an installation of the relevant endpoint software package that was defined previously. So in this scenario here, it's going to deploy this package here. I know that because that laptop is not in that particular directory that is uh, notified down here. So we just wait a few minutes for that to happen. Whilst we are waiting for the package to deploy to the endpoint server, I can monitor this as well. So if I head over to reporting here and I look at software deployment status, I can see 
user one laptop one, which happened to be the Active Directory name and the name of the uh, laptop in this scenario. And I can see that it's currently downloading the relevant package to that. And it's just a matter of waiting a few minutes whilst this happens. From this screen here now, you can see the download has actually been uh, completed and now it is prompting the user to install now. Uh, I do have options in terms of how I can push that install out from within the actual management console itself. Uh, I've just got it set to user approval so the user can manually click install. You can just force an installation and you can hide that from the user so that it installs in the background as well. These are all optional pieces. So again, now we just wait a few minutes for the install to occur. And again, from our software deployment status, we can now see that the software is in the state of deploy. I've just quickly refreshed to this screen. And as it moves through the different, the different areas, the expectation will be then that once it's deployed on the actual machine itself, we should then have a nice green completed block there. Um, we are now at the point where the client is now installed on the actual machine itself. There was no reboot required. Some of the endpoint pieces will require uh, a reboot, um, but for the core Sandblast agent pieces, you do not need to go through that. Uh, we can now see that we are connected to the cloud server at the bottom here, running the latest version of code and then running our latest uh, security suite as well to protect the endpoint from the various different uh, potential threats that are out there. Looking at the um, reporting element, you can also see my software deployment status is now completed. So we have a nice green across the board and we can see what blades are installed within there. Now at this point, I'm conscious that this could take a long time to go through all of the different options. And, and the whole idea here is just to get you started on deploying and installing Sandblast agent packages. Uh, but from the policy window, what I can do as well is I can set up a variety of different policies to change the behavior of how the endpoint software behaves. Um, for the purposes of this, the focus is in and around the Sandblast agent pieces, which will be the anti-malware, anti-ransomware, anti-bot, and threat extraction pieces. Again, out of the box, we, we have predefined rules already created for that, predefined actions, my apologies. Uh, and those are what we would consider to be the best practice approaches. However, as with, uh, as with everything, you can make changes. So again, uh, because we've got the Active Directory synced in, or if you wanted to work with virtual groups, you can create sub rules based on that. And then what you can do here is you can select the relevant areas to create different rules underneath that to uh, change the behavior for different elements of the organization. Thank you very much for your time today.